Well, it's Friday night. I'm sitting in my favorite reading corner. I've got a glass of my favorite drink and the premiere issue of Disney Adventure Magazine. So hurry back. Just an 80s boy and a 90s teen Going on all things Disney From miles to parks and in between Come share the magic with me La 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 Live your life to a Disney tune Come and share Jake's Disney Afternoon Hey Disney Afternoon Gang, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jake. If you're returning, thanks for joining me on a Friday night. And if you're new, I do all kinds of Disney content including subscription boxes, hauls, vintage, trivia. And today we're going to start something a little bit new. But you're going to want to first hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next Disney adventure. Alright, so thought we would try a new concept of mine. I've got a whole stack over here of Disney Adventures magazine. Um, first of all, how many of you were subscribed to Disney Adventures Magazine back in the day? I know I was, and I absolutely loved it. It was such a connection to Disney. Um, I don't think I had this premiere issue, um, but there it is. So I thought we would go down memory lane and just read through some of this. Don't worry, I'm going to put some images up on the screen so you can kind of follow along and read along with me. Um, but I just thought we'd have a little bit of fun and relive the 90s. So this magazine was premiered in the summer of 1990 and um, I had forgotten but it was released and marketed as the official magazine of the Disney Afternoon. So what better channel to dive into a magazine that is for our own namesake. So here we go. So on the cover we've got DuckTales, um, which was, you know, just really at the height of its popularity. I think it had come out in 87. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it had been really, you know, rolling for a little bit of time. So we open up the cover. We've got DuckTales the movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. Who saw that in theaters? I know I did. Still love it. One of the great classics. Opens August 3rd at theaters everywhere. So this must have been before August. Probably a school let out in June, I'm going to guess. Um, oh, yeah, right. So Little Mermaid was released that summer, having premiered the year before. There's an advertisement for taking it home on VHS, available only for a limited time, $26.99. Yeah, they were not cheap in the day, if I remember. Yeah, that brings back some good memories. Oh, perfect. So, Catch the Beat. So if you didn't know, there was a Disney Afternoon album um, that I think you can still get on Apple Music and things. Um, it's your pals from the Disney Afternoon, bringing you hot tunes from your favorite Disney animated TV series. So listen up and catch the beat with your own Disney Afternoon CD or cassette and get ready for the good times ahead. Oh, it is such a good album. Not only does it have like the theme songs on there, but there's a whole bunch of musical numbers in the early days of the Disney afternoon. Um, they kind of moved away from that a little bit, but some of the songs they wrote um, were great. All right, here's the introduction from the first premiere. They have like um, all of these like young pictures of the editors trying to relate to us kids, I guess. Whitewater rafting down the Congo River in search of lost treasure in the jungle? Now that's adventure. Soaring high above the mountaintops with Baloo and his tailspin mates on another exciting mission? That's adventure. Gazing through a telescope at the Milky Way on a clear, cool night? Traveling the world over and meeting new friends or even discovering the hidden secrets in your own backyard? That's adventure too. Finding out about new gadgets, real kid heroes, terrific new sports and games, and news from all over the place. That's all adventure. And that's what we'll deliver on each and every page of each issue of Disney Adventures. Hang on. All right, so that was their promise. This was, again, their premiere issue. So we've got some table of contents. Oh, okay, so there's a small article, maybe I'll read it quickly, about the making of the mountain, which is about Splash Mountain, which maybe seems appropriate since Splash Mountain is 
going to be no more as far as its theme. Um, I'm an all for it, but uh, maybe we'll take a little bit back in time. Splash Mountain, one of Disney's most popular rides, started making waves in 1983. Ride designer Tony Baxter, now in charge of designing the new Euro Disney in France, was the man with the wet idea. What if we build a log flume on chan- uh, sorry. What if we build a log flume, a channel with water running through it, ride at Disneyland based on the adventures of Br'er Rabbit? I don't know why no one stopped him after that idea. Tony's simple question sent dozens of talented designers, sketch artists, writers, and model builders racing around to create Splash Mountain. The ride opened six years later in Critter County section of the amusement park, where the mountain has been making a splash ever since. Here are some facts about Splash. Uh, here are some behind the scenes Splash facts. There are 50 hollowed out logs that hold six to seven passengers each and travel for almost a half a mile. That's interesting. Splash Mountain is 12 feet taller than Disneyland's Sleeping Beauty Castle. The ride is constructed entirely out of concrete, even the trees, to resist the harmful effects of water. And just how much water is it? At any one point per minute, there are 20,000 gallons of water flowing through the ride. The total reservoir capacity is 475,000 gallons, as much water as a small lake. Imagine jumping from a five-story building. Really, that's what they're going to lead in with kids? I don't think so. This is what it's like on Splash Mountain's final plunge into the Briar Patch. You reach a top speed of more than 40 miles an hour. That's about the speed limit around your town. Splash Mountain has the largest animated prop ever, a gigantic showboat that carries 21 animated characters. Interesting facts about the ride. Um, then there's a little bar at the bottom here called Inside Disney, kind of looking ahead to some things being released. So the first one, and probably the most important, look for a new TV series called Disney Afternoon in September featuring the new Tailspin. So this, again, was promoting what was going to become the afternoon. So they had a magazine, they had the two-hour block after school. They were really working it hard. Uh, let's see, the 1940 Disney classic Fantasia will be re-released on October 5th to celebrate its 50th birthday. Fun story, my grandfather took me to see um, that in the theater and I came home and my mom said, how was it? And I was like, it was the worst movie I had ever seen. And she was pretty embarrassed because my grandfather overheard. Except The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which I kind of liked. As an adult, I really liked Fantasia, but as a kid in 1990, 10-year-old Jake wasn't having it. The album Minnie and Me with 10-year-old Krista Larson. I don't remember who she is. Is anybody? Debuts August 28th. Ah, and then look for the classic The Prince and the Pauper short before the Rescuers Down Under movie. So that was going to come out this fall. Um, I love that Prince and the Pauper short. All right, so then there was always like this mail section where kids would write in. I always wanted to be one of those kids and never was one of those kids. I'm not bitter or anything. Um, let's see, let's pick one of these silly things to read. All right, here are some things we would like to see in a magazine. I don't know who the we is in this. Interviews with Alyssa Milano, Cadence Cameron, Candace Cameron, ugh, I can read, Millie Vanilli, Michael Jordan, and the new kids on the block. Well, there's some throwback names for you. We would also like uh, an advice column, puzzles, jokes, games, contests for kids, information about how Disney was made, and who the real characters are. What? We also want information about new movies coming out, articles about baseball, basketball, updates on the latest Nintendo games, comics, mysteries, and secret codes. So there's no name attached to that one. That reeks of adults. <sighs> Writing. Um, oh, right. Who played the Chippendale Rescue Rangers game? Oh, so good. I remember playing it. I didn't have video games really growing up, so I'd always play them at my friends, but I do remember playing this game a few times and it was not an easy game. Yeah, I may have to track that down. All right, then we've got a DuckTales comic, which I'll kind of breeze through here. Looks like another adventure on some island with some sort of primitive -y people that probably hasn't aged well in a little bit. It's a long comic. Okay. Oh, slime, silly putty. All right, who had those like red eggs with like the silly putty in it? I did. 
Invented in 1984. It was invented by accident. Uh, they're trying to invent a new kind of rubber and mixed boric acid and silicone oil in a test tube. Sounds dangerous. In 1968, Silly Putty even went to the moon. Slick sneakers. Let's face it, a world without sneakers is like a world without feet. What? Would Michael Jordan shoot hoops and loafers? Or Chris Everett play tennis in high heels? No, sneakers are it and they're here to stay. And that's and the best deal is that sneakers can be so different. Like Converse, glow in the dark high tops or Reeboks, Reebok neon saddle shoes. That deserves a drink. Or create your style with weird laces, sneaker paint. Oh, remember sneaker paint? Everybody was painting their own sneakers in the day. Got some sneakers you're proud of? Send us a picture. We might print it. Yeah, I would print it in my nonsense. All right, here was my favorite section. It was always like the pop culture news, music, movies, cartoons of the day. And this is the total throwback. Um, and they always kind of did it in this like bullet point style that I love. So let's see what was happening in 1990. Radical dude is Bart Simpson's favorite expression. Matt Groening, who created the oddball cartoon show The Simpsons, named the characters after his own family. Oh, that was news in the day. C. Thompson Howell is starring in a pilot for a new series called Whip Valentine. Howell describes this character as a young Indiana Jones adventurer. Whatever became of Whip Valentine? Did anybody see that show? I do not remember that at all. I wonder if it got past, like, the pilot. And who's C. Thomas Howell? Also didn't age well. Uh, TV's kids clubs are the latest craze. Check out the Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, and Fox TV for stickers, magazine, coupons, and great prizes. I don't think it would be very much longer that Disney would be advertising for Nickelodeon and Fox, but look at them trying to be all community-oriented. Watch for Martika on TV. She'll be starring in a new Pepsi commercial. I do not know who Martika is. All right, let's see what's happening in the music category. Ever since Straight Up took Paula Abdul straight to the top of the charts, everyone's been asking the ex-cheerleader to choreograph their videos. But Paula hasn't had much time. She's been performing all over the country and hanging out with John Stamos of Full House. I don't know why they thought that was important, but it is. She also released Shut Up and Dance, an album of her favorite songs remixed for great dancing. Here's a cool new way to listen to music. Get a switch hit. A tiny radio on a string you can wear around your neck. What? A switch hit? Oh, a switch, a switch, a switch hit. What the heck was a switch hit? I was only 10, it's probably too young. Hats, uh, hats off to Debbie Gibson. A hundred hats covered with bows and rhinestones, sorry. That's a weird edit. Donnie Wahlberg and the new kids on the block just sprained his ankle in a concert in England when he slipped on something that a fan threw on stage. I remember I remember hearing about this. But don't worry, Donnie will be rocking and rolling in New Kids on the Block live in your house, a new special on the Disney Channel in August. All right, let's see what's coming to video. All right, so we already talked about this a little bit. If you miss The Little Mermaid, don't go looking under the sea. <laughs> It's now on sale. Listen closely and you'll recognize Prince Eric's voice. It's Christopher Barnes from the sitcom Day by Day. I don't remember that show. And the Mickey Mouse Club movie, Just Perfect. Another one I don't remember. Chris's favorite scene was when he had to pretend Prince Eric's ship was sinking. I took a big, uh, big swig of water and spat all over it. He laughs. <laughs> Didn't Christopher Barnes also play Greg in the Brady Bunch? Movies, remember those Brady Bunch movies? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was Greg. Uh, dog lover should rent Canine or Turner and Hooch. All right, so Turner and Hooch is now a TV series on Disney Plus, but this was the original Reese of the movie with Tom Hanks. I love that movie, but I haven't watched a TV show yet. Um, so I guess I guess we're at that age where like all our childhood things are being reinvented. Um, just because I'll pay money for that. Um, yeah, Turn and Hooch was a great movie. And that crazy Nintendo spy Mario is out to rescue the princess again. Super Mario 3. 
I don't care what you have to say, Super Mario 3 is the best of all of the Marios. Hands down, the best. Still play it to this day. And this was the year it was released. We didn't know what was going to hit us. We went crazy for Mario. Alright, let's look under movies. See what's happening under movies. Back to the Future is back at it again. And this time, Michael J. Fox travels to the Wild West. Alright, speaking of the worst Part 3s. Mario Part 3 was the best. Back to the Future Part 3, Wild West. Oh. Mary Sturgenbergen, Durgen. I don't know what her name is, but I dislike her immensely. Did you know that Back to the Future 2 and Back to the Future 3 were filmed at the same time on different sets? I actually didn't know that. No wonder one of them stank. Back to the Future 2 is where it's at. Uh, talk about double duty. Cartoons in common. Blah, 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 blah. Ah. The latest craze at the movies and the futuristic TV family, the Jetsons, star in their own movie. Remember the Jetsons movie? I struggled with the Jetsons a little bit, but I do think I liked the movie. Madonna fans will love her as Breathless Mahoney in Dick Tracy. During production, Madonna was also rehearsing for her Blonde Ambition World Tour. She gave a private concert for the cast and crew, plus a few stars like Robert Downey Jr. Okay. Um, and the Turtles will be back in 1991. I'm assuming that's the secret of the ooze, right? Because I think, I think the first one had come out. And don't miss this, uh, don't miss next issue, the scoop on Johnny, Winona, and more. Plus some great singing tips from the Jackson's voice coach. Interesting. That hasn't aged well. All right. We've got a Chippendale Rescues Rain, Rain, Rescue Rangers comic. Always classic. Fat Cat and the Gang are at it again. Then sometimes they have these like science -y articles. Rant, I skipped over them because it's stupid. Um, yeah, something about Mission Antarctica. Who cares? Nobody cares. Uh, adopt the Earth, Recycle, Bald Eagles. Rant, 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 nobody cares. Uh, so here's a, is this a puffin? Yeah, this is a puffin bird. Cute, but. All right, DuckTales comic. Ugh. More like references to like indigenous peoples things that did not age well, Disney. All right, we'll skip through that. Skip, 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 skip. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Face people to me. I don't remember this section. Major Magical Dude. All right, so he's like a. T what? What? A 12 year old magician. Ugh, I can't with him already. All right. New York City Hardball, Breaking the Pinata. Oh, some just random snapshots. All right, so shout out to New York City. I'm here for it. Sky King, Everyday Enhancement. Some guy in a helicopter, nobody cares. All right, Cyber. Oh, there was like a tech and science thing. Mm, what was this for? I don't know. Okay. And then they had like... I don't know. Some sciencey experiments? No, thank you. Hard pass. Uh, oh, here's an advertisement for Where in Time is Carmen San Diego for the computer? Oh, there is a throwback. Forty-four ninety-five. No wonder we didn't have computer uh, video games in the day. They were so expensive. So it was made for IBM PC, Apple II, and Tandy. Well, Tandy was a bad life choice for somebody. Uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, another comic. They are really pumping the Disney Afternoon stuff, and yours truly is not complaining. Uh, oh, here's some things about the uh, world gymnast Dwayne Thompson, almost trains 20 hours a week. At 13 years old, Dwayne Thomas has traveled the world, won international competitions, and met President Bush. I don't think that's an honor anybody's relishing in. He's a world-class gymnast, and less than 50 teenagers can make that claim. Um, cool. More on the gymnast, monster truck, wicked wheels. All right, so skateboarding. Remember skateboarding was all the thing? Too clumsy to do it. Oh, hacky sack. Ugh, the hacky sack crowd was annoying. Just going to put it out there. If you played hacky sack, I'm sorry, but you were annoying. Uh, rollerblades. Rollerblades was the thing. I was not as good as rollerblades. I, I did... Uh, uh, speed racing on roller skates for a while. I took lessons. There's something you should know. 
All right, we got another Tailspin comic, which must have been early on. I think this was the year that Tailspin got released. Um, let's see, we've got Rebecca, Don Carnage and gang. Again with the Trapped Island in the like native people's references, Disney. All right, well, they're moving away from that. So I guess there's that bit of information. Okay, some more comic advertisements. Here's some recipes. Lucky Tuna Power Pasta, Mixed Pasta Squiggles, Broccoli Tomato Tuna, Bell Peppers, Green Beans, Kidney Beans, Scallions, Hard Cooked Eggs, and Oil and Vinegar and Dressing. Major power. Ugh, I don't know about that. I'll hard pass on that. Uh, Mary Louise and the Alligator. Nobody wants to read your stories. Nobody, literally nobody. Oh, Puzzles and Games. I also love these. Can you spot 15 or more mistakes in this card store scene? Well, the hip action in these cartoons is unrealistic and unhealthy for children, but maybe that's not what they were referring to. All right, happy St. Patrick's Day with hearts. I, su I suppose it's supposed to be Valentine's Day. Pushes on the wrong side of the door. Please leave before paying my kind of store. Get sick cards. Auto care cards. I'm sure somebody would like that to be a thing. All right, that's enough of that. Sorry and search. Seven mini dinosaurs are hiding from the two big dinosaurs in the scene. Can you spot them? Yeah, I, I've got eyes. I can spot them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, got them all. Bing, bang, boom. Picture crossword. Ain't nobody got time for that. Tell me about money answers um i don't understand this goodbye picture okay so the adventure begins october 9th with the new disney adventures magazine and then we've got an advertisement on the back for the disney afternoon all right, so there we have it. Our first issue done. A little trip down memory lane. Got the 90s rocking and rolling. I've got a pile more of these. They actually get a little bit better. This first one was kind of definitely a trial and error for them. You could see them fumbling a little bit. But as we get into this, we're going to go down some serious memory lane. So if you're here for it, we're going to be back on Friday nights, I think. You're going to pour your favorite drink. We're going to explore the 90s and a little bit of Disney magic. So until the next Disney afternoon magazine.